In this video, we're going to look at another feature of sine, and this feature relates to cosine as well, but we're going to focus on sine first. So we want to state the period, which is the feature we're interested in, for each of the following sine graphs. And now, when we refer to the period of a sine, or indeed a cosine graph, it's essentially how long it takes for the graph to complete a full cycle. So you may have seen already that sine and cosine have a particular shape, all right, the curve functions, and they take a certain distance or a certain interval to complete one cycle, and that cycle or that length of the cycle is known as the period. Now for sine graphs, we have a particular formula that will help us calculate what the period is. And that is that the period is equal to 360 over n. We're going to talk about what that n means now. So for part A, we have sine of x. And when we write x, it technically means 1 times x. So the n value is going to be whatever's multiplying the x. So in this case, we're going to say that n is equal to 1. So that means when we get to calculating the period of this first one, we'll see that the period is equal to 360 over 1, which is simply 360. So that is the period for y equals sine of x. And we'll get the calculator out in a minute and show that that means that one cycle takes 360 degrees. For part b, we can see the number multiplying x is 4. So we're going to say n equals 4. And that means when we get to calculating the period, the period for b is going to be 360 divided by n, which is 4. And 360 divided by 4 gives 90. So the second graph will have a period of 90. For part C, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because 1 is multiplying x and 10 is dividing it, which means that the n value is 1 over 10. So for this, we can say that n is equal to 1 over 10. So that's the n value for this particular graph. So just to run through that, sine of x over 10 is the same as 1 over 10 times x. So the n value is 1 over 10. So when we go about calculating the period, that's going to equal 360 divided by 1 over 10. Now that's the same as 360, and when we divide a fraction, we can just multiply by the reciprocal, which will be 10 over 1. So this will give a period of 360 times 10, which is 3,600. So that's the period for part C. For part D, it's similar to part C in that we've got a fraction that's multiplying x. So a common mistake here would, just say, would be just to say that n is 2, but it is in fact 2 over 3. So n is equal to 2 over 3 for this example which means that the period, when we get to calculating that, is going to equal 360 divided by 2 over 3. And now, just like we did before, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to equal 360 times 3 over 2. And now, to help me calculate this, I'm actually going to do 360, and I'm going to divide by the 2 first. So that will just give me 180 multiplied by 3, so that the final answer is simply 180 multiplied by 3, which is 540. So that is going to be the period for part D. So up next on the calculator, what we're going to do is we're just going to graph a couple of these. And for any that I don't graph, I'll put the graph screens up anyway at the end for you to look at. So we're going to start by going into the main menu. And I'm going to do part A and part D for this particular question. So for part A, we're just going to start with the graph of sine of x. So hitting keyboard, we can bring up this menu, which allows us to type in sine of x. And then we can hit the graph button to bring up the graph screen. And we're going to drag sine of x in here. And we don't get a very good look at this graph. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the view screen so that we can see one cycle of the graph. So to do that, we're going to hit the four arrows up the top, and we're going to change our x minimum to zero. And for part A, our x maximum is going to be the value of the period. 
So I'm going to type 360 in here. Then the Y min and the Y max, I'm just going to change to be negative 2 and 2. And that'll just allow us to get a slightly better look at the graph. Hitting OK will then show us what one cycle of this graph looks like. And we can see that it takes 360 degrees to get from 0, 0 to 360, 0. And I can put those points on by going analysis, G solve, root, which will give us the first x-intercept at 0, 0. And then I can lock that on by hitting the blue execute button. And I can tab across, the next x-intercept would be 180. And that second x-intercept, which represents a full cycle, is at 360, 0. And we can lock that on by hitting execute. So that shows that one cycle takes 360 degrees. And just for interest sake, if I went up to those four arrows again, and I changed the X maximum to be, say, 720 degrees, or 720 as a value, and hit execute, you can see we now get two full cycles of the graph for 720 degrees. And that makes sense because 360 plus 360, so two cycles, adds up to 720. So next we'll have a look at part D. So going back to the main menu and bring out the keyboard, we can type in sine and then a fraction 2x divided by 3 and hitting execute. We're now going to open up the graph screen and drag that in. And once again, we're going to need to change our um, view screen. So we're going to click on the four arrows at the top and we're going to go this time from x is 0 to x is 540, because that's the period, which is how long it will take for one cycle to happen. For the y min and the y max, I'm just going to set them as negative 2 and 2 to get us a slightly better look at this function. And hitting OK will sketch one cycle of the graph, which we can see. Now going analysis, g solve root, we can see the first x-intercept is at 0, 0. The next one is going to be halfway, which is 270. And then a full cycle takes us to another x-intercept, which is 540, 0. Now, once again, if I change that view screen, and this time went from an x minimum of negative 540 to 540, hitting OK will show two cycles of the graph, one in the negative x direction and one in the positive x direction. So that's how we calculate the period for a sine graph. And we use this formula, which is 360 over n, which is the coefficient of x. And that will allow us to calculate how long it takes for one cycle of the graph to be completed. So over to the right, I've just put up the graphs of b and c for you to have a quick look at. And as always, stay tuned for more videos that are going over circular functions. And good luck for any questions and problems you're attempting.